a member of the woodwind family, which is interesting because flutes haven't been made out of wood for many, many years. Commonly, they are made out of silver and occasionally gold. To make sound on the flute, air must be blown across this hole on the lip plate. That creates a vibration that gets sent all the way through the instrument. If you'd like to change the notes or the pitch that you are playing, you'll press these buttons in different combinations. If you would like the sound to go up, generally speaking, you will lift up your fingers. And if you would like the sound to go down, generally speaking, you'll just add a finger or two. Now the flute is one of the highest instruments in the band, meaning it could play very high, but not very low. Take a listen. The flute can be a very beautiful melodic instrument. Take a listen to the theme from the movie Up. can also be a whimsical instrument and can play quick notes. Some things to consider when choosing an instrument and considering the flute. Flutes are not a girl or boy instrument. Anybody can play the flute. Your arms should be long enough to hold the flute up to your mouth and reach all of the keys that you need to use. It is not desirable for a flute student or aspiring flute students to have a teardrop top lip. That means the center of the top lip comes down almost to a point. I'm not saying that it is impossible, but it does make it a little difficult when starting on the flute. If you are someone who really likes those high sounds and likes the size and the quality of the flute, it just might be the instrument for you. The clarinet. The clarinet is a woodwind instrument. Traditionally, it's been made out of wood. However, they're also made out of plastic and other materials too so that they can be more durable. The clarinet uses a reed to produce its sound. The reed vibrates and then sends the sound all the way through the instrument, and you use your fingers to cover the holes. The clarinet is very similar to recorder in a lot of ways, and this is a great instrument to play if you know that you want to do band this year, but you're just not sure on an instrument. This is actually the instrument I started on when I was in fifth grade. Now the clarinet can play very low. <laughs> that you would be able to play after just a few weeks of band. And then after some practice, you would be able to play something more like this. sounds that you hear. If you'd
you'd like to change the sound or the notes that you were playing, you will press all of the buttons in different orders. Generally speaking, if you'd like the sound to go up, you will lift your fingers up. If you'd like the sound to go down, then you will add fingers. The saxophone is a mid-range instrument, meaning it can play pretty low and pretty high. Take a listen. Because the saxophone is a mid-range instrument, it often provides the harmonies in the band setting. Those harmonies support the melodic and the foundation of the sound, those lower brass instruments. The saxophone is a very versatile instrument, meaning that it can play in different musical settings. Two main settings that you often hear the saxophone include the classical setting, jazz setting. Some things to consider when choosing the saxophone or any instruments is we only need a very few saxophones. Too many saxophones can overpower the band. It is not desirable for students to have double jointed thumbs or pinkies. These are important fingers, and if they're double jointed, that can make pressing those keys a little bit more difficult. The saxophone takes a lot of air. It is a bigger instrument, therefore it requires some more air, very strong air support. The schools do not have saxophones for students to rent. If you are interested in saxophone, you need to rent through our West Music program or buy one yourself. Saxophones can be heavy, hence why there's a neck strap to try and help take the weight off some of your fingers. But if you are not quite that strong or if you're a little too small, that's okay. Maybe consider choosing the clarinet and then a few years down the road, you can switch to saxophone. There are no boy or girl instruments, just people instruments. That means that anyone can play the saxophone. Boys, girls, whoever you are, non-binary friends, you're all welcome to pick the saxophone. trumpet. The trumpet is the highest member of the brass family. As you can see, it's made of brass. It has only three keys and a mouthpiece. Brass instruments are all the same in the way that you produce the sound on them. You need to be able to get your lips to vibrate in order to produce the sound. Go ahead and put your lips together and try and do this. If you can do that, you'll probably be a good brass player. Watch what happens when I do that into the mouthpiece. And with the mouthpiece alone, you can actually play pretty high and pretty low. Now when you add that to the trumpet and start doing different combinations of these keys, that's how you can play songs. Here's one that you'd be able to play after just a few weeks of band. some practice, you would be able to play something more like this. here to talk to you about the trombone. The trombone is a brass instrument uh, for a couple reasons. One, it's made out of brass, but more importantly, it's because of the way we make our sound. All brass instruments are classified or make the sound the same way. We take our lips and we buzz them together. 
I'm going to put the mouthpiece up. It changes the sound. Put the mouthpiece in, and the front, the instrument changes the sound for me. I can change the way that I play two different ways. I can either move the slide, which allows me to go up and down, and the trombone can do something that no other instrument in the band can do, which is called a glissando, which is a lot of fun to play. So we can do it that way, or we can just change the shape of our lips to go higher and lower, for example. So that's how we kind of produce the sounds, a combination of the slide and our lips changing shapes. And so the trombone can get kind of a big, powerful sound or kind of a lighthearted, jazzy sound. Here's an example of a big, um, fat sound that we might have. Or something a little bit different. Or maybe a little bit lighthearted and kind of jazzy. So, the trombone. I was drawn to the trombone as a fifth grader because I just really enjoy the big, big, powerful sound that it has. Uh, and, and like the fact that I might be able to be kind of a jazzy sound later on when I grew up. So that's why I was kind of drawn to the, the trombone. Some people are worried that, hey, they think, oh, I'm, I'm kind of short or I don't have very long arms. Can I play the trombone? Absolutely. Everybody can play the trombone. It doesn't matter what size you are. I've taught lots of very short trombone players and they do just fine. So I hope to see you playing the trombone sometime soon. Now, I have to talk to you about a different brass instrument. I need to talk to you about the euphonium. So some of you may see this and go, ooh, that looks like a tuba. No, it's not a tuba. It's a little bit smaller than a tuba. This is a tuba. This is euphonium. They're a little, they're, obviously the tuba is quite a bit bigger. So this is a brass instrument, which means that we're going to produce the sound just the same way. Got the mouthpiece, buzz in your lips. And it sounds a lot like a trombone. The really only difference between the trombone and the euphonium, they use exactly the same mouthpiece, the trombone and the euphonium. I can take this and put it in my trombone. Um, we use the lips that are the same way. Really, the only difference is the trombone has a slide and a euphonium has valves. And the euphonium has kind of a more mellow sound than the trombone. So, for example, I might give you. Just a little bit more mellow sound. So if you decide to play the euphonium, uh, you would get one from the school because these are kind of expensive. So we would um, lend one to you from the school. So the euphonium, check it out. Hey, I'm here to talk to you about the tuba. The tuba is a brass instrument. It is the lowest brass instrument that we have in the family. So as all brass instruments make sound, this one, we, we buzz our lips when, when we produce the sound. This one has a giant mouthpiece, and what we're doing is we're buzzing our lips. We bring the mouthpiece up. We put it in and we get this big low sound. And I can play pretty low on the tuba, which is a lot of fun. And I can go a little bit higher. And 
So the tube was really cool. It's very, very important. We cannot, uh, the band cannot sound good if we don't have a tuba because it's the, the bass. And if we don't have the bass, everything sounds a little funny. So if you're someone who likes, you know, if you're in the car driving along or something, if you're someone who likes to turn the bass way up on the car radio, this is your instrument. Um, so here's a couple examples of what the tuba might sound like. Here's a very famous melody the tubas typically play, right? Some people think, well, gosh, this is a huge instrument. How am I going to be able to carry this thing around? The good news is that most of the cases actually have wheels, and so it kind of helps you be able to carry it around. Um, and we typically, we play when we sit down, so you don't have to carry it. It sits on your chair with you. And sometimes we even get a special tuba stand for you to hold it up. So it is possible for smaller people to play the tuba. And I've had lots of, plenty of small people decide to play the tuba because they just like the sound of it. So don't let the size of it um, kind of deter you. Um, what we do look for is, um, to, um, can you get a nice big low sound? And so if you decide to play the tuba, I may come to you and say, hey, can you get this nice big low sound before we decide to actually do it? But otherwise, it's a really fun instrument. I really enjoy playing the tuba. And I hope that maybe you will too. Hey, I'm here to talk to you about being a percussionist. Now, unlike other instruments like the clarinet or trombone, where they only have to learn one instrument, as a percussionist, you have to learn how to play a whole bunch of different instruments. The biggest two that we're going to spend our time on are going to be the mallets, or more specifically, the bells, and the snare drum. Now, the bells is set up very much like a piano. Like you can imagine a piano with this black keys on the top and the white keys on the bottom. So if you know how to play piano, playing the bells is going to be very easy to you because it's something you've already done. So it is often helpful and, and maybe even encouraged if you want to be a percussionist to be a pianist first. It's not required to be a piano player, but it is often helpful. So here's an example of what the bells might sound like. Or maybe a little Mozart. All right? So that's the bells. We're going to spend a lot of time learning how to read the music, learning how what each note on the keyboard is. And you may have done something similar with this in your music classes, but sometimes we take the bars off. I'm going to make you learn what each one of those notes are. Now, talking about snare drum. Sometimes people think, oh, it's just, you just hit it. Well, it's a little bit more complicated than that. We're going to spend a lot of time learning how to move our sticks and gaining a lot of stick control, learning what the notation means and how to play that. So maybe something like this. Or playing something a little more complex. So the snare drum. Now this is a drum pad. Uh, we, when you come to, when, whenever we play in large groups, we often play on a real snare drum. This is what you get for playing at home and for playing in our lessons. It feels exactly the same as a snare drum. It's just not as loud and, and it's a lot lighter and it's a little bit cheaper. So uh, if you go to get a percussion kit, you don't have to buy the whole snare drum. You just get the drum pad and it works. 
works out just as well. Uh, and eventually we'll move on to things like timpani and crash cymbals and snares and triangles and tambourines and all kinds of fun like things like that. So this is what being a uh, percussionist is like. One thing that we do not teach as beginning teachers here in Iowa City is that we do not teach rock drumming. All right, so we, we teach classical drumming, which is with your bells and your snare drum. If you're looking to be a rock drummer, that's something that you have to go do with a private lesson teacher somewhere else. And we can help you find a teacher if you're looking for that. Just know that that's not something that we teach uh, and that usually we don't get into that until you, you're in seventh grade or eighth grade or, or high school even if you want to be a rock or jazz drummer. So classical percussionist, I hope to see you being a percussionist sometime soon.